Macintosh.js is a Mac emulator that's completely written in JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. It's very easy to use. All you have to do is download the app, install it, and run it. No need to hunt down OS images or system ROMs. Just run it and you're done. It even contains some demos of applications and games so you can experiment with it right away. So sit back, relax, and let's see what you can do with this emulator. Macintosh.js is an emulator with focus. Specifically, it emulates a Mac computer running Mac OS 8 using a Motorola 68000 CPU. So you won't be able to run software that requires PowerPC CPUs or run older versions of the operating system. Having that focus has made it possible for the Mac emulator to be easy to use. With other emulators, you have to deal with obtaining OS install disk, system ROMs, software, create disk images, and then install everything yourself. Macintosh.js has everything prepackaged for you. You can even copy your own CD-ROM images and files to the emulator if the included software is not enough for you. Let me demonstrate how easy it is to use this emulator. I'll download the emulator from the website. There will be a link for it in the description. Run the installer. When it's done installing on a Windows machine, the emulator will automatically load. To access it later, just click on its icon where your programs are stored, and you're done. The process was just as easy on my Chromebook too, but you do need Linux for Chrome OS installed. While running the emulator, at the bottom you have some options. You can quit the emulator, see the credits, or open the help menu. The help menu is important because if you see here, there's a link to the location of where to save any Mac files or CD images you want to use. Just click on it and it will open up a folder ready for files to be copied. So let's start using this emulator and check out some software applications. You may have noticed that the emulator is not filling up my screen. Unfortunately, it does not support full screen and the maximum available resolution is 800 by 600. You wouldn't want to try this on a 4K screen. Just look how small the emulator is in 4K. So for this video, I will be manually zooming in the screen so you can get a better view. For software applications, the emulator includes early trial versions of some of Adobe's creative suite of apps. Dimensions, version 2.0, is a 3D art package that Adobe described as an easy way to get 3D effects into your artwork. So it allowed you to import your Adobe Illustrator files and give them depth. You can extrude your artwork, scale it, rotate into different views, and more. Illustrator version 5.5 really needs no introduction. If you're an Illustrator user, try creating something in this old version to see how it compares to what you use now. Photoshop 3.0 is very different to what it is today. Many free packages today have more features than what version 3.0 of Photoshop had, a package that costs hundreds of dollars. And the Adobe Premiere workflow in version 4.0 looks completely different too. It seems like software companies in 1994 were still trying to figure out just how a digital video workflow should work. Surprisingly, Dragging and dropping videos from your desktop and into the timeline works just like it does today. When playing back this project, it demonstrates an issue with the emulator. And that issue is that audio playback is severely delayed. A couple of seconds pass by before sound from the video was heard. This is an issue throughout the entire emulator, not just video playback. Here is another video that can better illustrate this. It's an early interview from a developer at Bungie, the devs that created the Halo series. I'll hit play. Yeah. Well, you know, software and sound comes in much, much later. More of an art than a science. The actual video uh, playback is fine, though, we were at even when World, I resize the video. Box was in production. So now let me try we out some Mac games. The first game I'm going to try is not a demo, but a game I already own. Warcraft 2 is one of my favorite games ever, and I have a CD for it. It's a hybrid CD that works on both PC and Mac, 
so I immediately created an ISO image of the disk and then added it to the appropriate Macintosh.js directory. You will have to reboot the emulator to access the disk or any files you add to this directory. The disk will show up automatically upon boot up, but when trying to install the game, I get the error that the game is only for PowerPC Max. Since Macintosh.js only emulates 68,000 base Max, it won't work here. I should have read the label on the disk case, but I still would have tried this anyway, just to see what happens. So I'll just move on to some game demos. The Link series of golf games for computers were known to be the most accurate simulations back then. When I was younger, I tried the demos for Lynx like I'm doing now, but the sheer amount of options in its menus made it difficult to get into, so it's really a game for people who love golfing. Maxis always made fun sim games, with SimCity being the most famous. I never played this tower simulator by them, but this quick demo does pique my interest. Do any of you know if there's anything similar for mobile devices today? Rebel Assault would have been a great experience if not for a couple of issues. I used to own this game back in college and it was great, but the experience in the emulator is ruined because of the fact that the emulator doesn't lock the mouse. So if you move your mouse outside the emulator, which is easier to do if it's not full screen, the game loses track of the mouse and completely messes up your gameplay. On top of that, there's mouse lag that also affects the gameplay. Overall, your mileage will vary depending on the game you try. I had issues with Wolfenstein 3D. You can see here that there are graphical glitches in the game. Duke Nukem 3D was working without glitches, but it was running too slow. And the included Dungeons and Dragons games had distorted text. There are other issues you should know about. Internet does not work, and if it did, the included web browsers are severely outdated so most websites wouldn't work at all. While navigating Mac OS 8, you can feel some mouse lag that's very noticeable. Changing the tracking speed doesn't help enough to not notice it. It's not deal breaking, but I just wanted to mention it. Weirdly, the boxes inside the scroll bars do not move when you're scrolling. Scrolling works, but the box just stays in the same place. FPS games were virtually unplayable with mouse controls. The mouse was way too sensitive and movement was out of control. Even when lowering the sensitivity in games, the issue persisted. But the sensitivity issue was not present in Rebel Assault, just the first person shooters I tried. And like I mentioned before, the emulator does not lock the mouse cursor, so games with mouse controls are going to have problems with this. I understand not locking the mouse because it makes it easier to switch between the emulator and your computer's desktop, but at least I would have liked the option to lock it or offer a full screen option which would avoid the issue completely. The numeric keypad does not work in the emulator either. Some games default controls to the numeric keypad, so you'll find yourself remapping keys often. And joysticks are not supported, so only mouse and keyboard inputs are available. I did experience several crashes while using Macintosh.js. The emulator itself didn't crash, it was the Macintosh operating system that's being emulated that was crashing. Some applications would not open after using the emulator for a while, while other crashes forced me to reboot Mac OS 8. All these crashes and performance issues I experienced both on my Chromebook and Windows desktop. Even with the issues I experienced, I'm amazed at how all this was developed only using web technologies. It just makes me wonder how much better it would be if it was a native application. Anyway, Macintosh.js is a really convenient emulator that was enjoyable to use. It has its issues, but it's really cool to just play around and get some nostalgia, or if you are curious about macOS version 8. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, and if you want to see more content like this, subscribe to my channel. Thank you, and I'll speak to you next time.